Hey guys, if you haven't heard about Anchor by Spotify, it's simply the easiest way to make a podcast. Anchor by Spotify has everything you need all in one place. So let me explain. Now, Anchor has tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your own cell phone or your own computer. Now, I've been using and loving Anchor by Spotify for two years now. And don't forget that Anchor will go ahead and distribute your podcast on so many listening platforms like Spotify and Apple Podcasts and so many, many more. Now, I think it's simply everything you need to make your own podcast all in one place. And don't forget, Anchor is totally free. So why don't you go ahead and download the Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. I can't wait to hear all of your podcasts. Hey everyone, welcome back to all my listeners. Now this is episode number two of season eight. Today is Wednesday, January 11th, 2023. My name is Sonal Patel, and this is the Paint the Medical Picture podcast series. Now, I hope you're all keeping your outlook high for the year ahead, right? It is the second week in January of the new year, 2023. So I want everyone staying focused and committed to improving all of your lives, your situations, your status of health, your everything. Remember, we are still in that seemingly never, ever ending public health emergency or PHE status here in the United States. We should be getting word out, though, in another couple of days here on a renewal because I don't think there's going to be an end in January. So I think they're going to extend it out one more time. But let's see what they do. Now, all right, you guys, let's get into it today. So, of course... In season eight, I'm still going to be dedicating the second Wednesday of the month today to the OIG work plan. So the very, very important news, right? And all of those goings on in the office of the inspector general. And in my compliance tips and recommendations today in trustee tip, I'm going to be getting into the corrections that have already been made to our new ENM revisions for 2023 that just took effect on January 1st, again, just a few days ago. So try and keep that pen handy for these corrections that I wanna go over. And of course, to start off season eight spark, I'm gonna keep continuing ahead and round out today's episode with another remarkable quote on creativity by Elizabeth Gilbert. If you guys have checked me out on LinkedIn, You know I'm all about compliance and protecting our physicians and our valued healthcare professionals when it comes to the business of medicine. I hope this week with me brings you enough to take back to your organizations, to want to dive in deeper, to use my tips and best practices to ensure success. I hope this podcast will help you boost the quality of documentation capture and improve coding accuracy as you help all of your providers paint the medical picture. If you like what you're hearing, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button now so you don't miss another episode. Please write in a review and kindly drop me a five-star rating on Apple Podcasts or wherever you listen to my podcast. I'd really love your support. And as always, a friendly disclaimer. Remember, I'm bringing you the news, current healthcare industry news, my compliance tips and my recommendations based on my over 12 years of experience in front office, in back end in coding, and in billing for multi-specialty physicians, in compliance, and in auditing for both ENM and surgical operative reports. These are my opinions alone and are not to be construed as legal advice. So let's get into Newsworthy, the month of December's OIG work plan updates. Now the first OIG work plan update for December 2022 is titled Implementation of Inflation Indexed Rebates for Part B Drugs. Now, this report is coming from the Office of Evaluation and Inspections. The Inflation Reduction Act of 2022 requires CMS to collect rebates from drug manufacturers for certain Part B drugs if prices increase faster than inflation. 
the implementation date of these rebate provisions is the first quarter of 2023, meaning that CMS must act quickly to comply with the legislative requirements. During the past decade, the OIG completed three studies that estimated how much Medicare could have saved if manufacturers had paid rebates for Part B drugs. The OIG also summarized several imp implementation issues that would need to be addressed to establish rebates for Part B drugs. This product will summarize insights from the OIG's previous work with the goal of assisting CMS in its implementation efforts. Now, this final report is expected in fiscal year 2023. Now, the second OIG work plan update for December 2022 is titled Audit of Medicare Part B Opioid Use Disorder Treatment Services Provided by Opioid Treatment Programs, Bundled Payments, and Telehealth Services. Now, this report is coming from the Office of Audit Services. Substance use disorders involving drugs or alcohol can cause serious health problems and even death. Medication for substance use disorders, including opioid use disorder, or OUD, is used to sustain recovery and prevent overdoses. Currently, there are three Food and Drug Administration, or FDA-approved, medications to treat OUD, again, opioid use disorder. The first is called buprenorphine, the second is methadone, and the third is naltrexone. Treatment for OUD, opioid use disorder, is provided in several settings, including freestanding opioid treatment programs, or OTPs. Section 2005 of the Substance Use Disorder Prevention that Promotes Opioid Recovery and Treatment for Patients and Communities Act, also called the Support Act, established a new Medicare Part B benefit for its opioid use disorder OUD treatment services furnished by OTPs. CMS implemented this benefit for services furnished on or after January 1, 2020, as required by the Support Act. Section 1834W2 of the Social Security Act authorized the HHS Secretary to implement the Medicare OTP benefit by using one or more payment bundles. Under Section 1861.3 of the Social Security Act, OUD treatment services include FDA-approved treatment medication, dispensing and administration of treatment medication, substance use counseling, individual and group therapy, tox toxicology testing, and other items and services that the HHS Secretary determines are appropriate. The OIG will review the OUD treatment services that were reimbursed under the bundle payments provided to people enrolled in Medicare. OIG will determine the types, delivery methods, albeit in person or via telehealth, as well as the frequency of OUD treatment services provided to Medicare enrollees by OTPs that received bundled payments. OIG will compare the bundled payments for OUD treatment services with the reimbursement amount of the actual OUD treatment services if the services were not part of the bundled payment. OIG will also determine whether these services complied with certain Medicare requirements. This final report is expected in fiscal year 2024. Now, the third OIG work plan update for December 2022 is titled Special Inspector General for Afghanistan Reconstruction External Peer Review. Now this report is coming from the Office of Evaluation and Inspections. The Council of the Inspectors General on Integrity and Efficiency External Peer Review Program is designed to assure OIGs and their stakeholders of an inspection and evaluation and INEs organization's compliance with Blue Book standards. Specifically, the external peer review of an OIG's INE organization is designed to determine whether the reviewed organization's internal policies and procedures are consistent with Blue Book standards and whether the reviewed reports generally complied with Blue Book standards and the reviewed organization's associated internal policies and procedures.
This evaluation will review the Special Inspector General for Afghanistan Reconstruction, or SIGAR, policies and procedures for the Audit and Inspection Directorate, the Research and Analysis Directorate, and the Lessons Learned Program to determine whether they are consistent with Blue Book standards. This evaluation will also review three SIGAR reports to determine whether they are consistent with Blue Book policies and internal policies and procedures. This final report is expected in fiscal year 2023. Now, the fourth OIG work plan update for December 2022 is titled CMS's Oversight of Federal Medical Loss Ratio Requirements in Medicaid Managed Care. Now, this report is coming from the Office of Evaluation and Inspections. With its 2016 Medicaid Managed Care Regulations, CMS chose Medical Loss Ratios, or MLRs, as a policy tool to ensure appropriate stewardship of managed care funds. The federal MLR is the percentage of premium revenue that a managed care plan spent on covered health care services and quality improvement activities during a 12-month period. Federal MLR requirements help ensure that managed care plans spend most of their revenue on services related to the health of their enrollees, thereby limiting the amount that plans can spend on administration and keep as profit. As part of the process for setting capitation rates, federal regulations require states to set their plans' capitation rates so that plans will reasonably achieve MLRs of at least 85%, the federal MLR, MLR standard. States must take into account their plans' reported MLRs when setting future capitation rates. OIG has previously found weaknesses in states' oversight of the completeness and accuracy of their plans' MLR reporting. CMS plays a vital role in overseeing states' implementation of federal MLR requirements as it is responsible for the review and approval of states' capitation rates for their managed care plans, including review of state-submitted MLR data. OIG's evaluation will determine three things. The first, how CMS has incorporated MLR data in its review of states' capitation rate certifications. And second, the oversight activities that CMS conducts to ensure that states submit to CMS complete and accurate MLR data. And finally, third, whether CMS has ensured that states have used MLR data as required to set actuarially sound capitation rates. This final report is expected in fiscal year 2024. Now, the fifth and final OIG work plan update for December 2022 is titled NIH Recipient Institutions Reporting of Monetary Donations that Support Research. This report is coming from the Office of Evaluation and Inspections. Recipient institutions that receive funding from the National Institutes of Health, the NIH, play a key role in protecting the integrity and security of U.S. biomedical research, in part by identifying investigators' other support, which does include all resources made available to an investigator in support of and or related to all of their research endeavors, as well as reporting this information to the NIH during the grant award process. Recipient institutions' failure to comply with these reporting requirements hinders the NIH's ability to conduct effective oversight. When an investigator receives a monetary donation when there is no expectation of anything in return, e.g. time commitment, services, specific research activities, the NIH considers it a gift and does not require recipient institutions to report it as other support. However, NIH has not issued specific guidance to recipient institutions on how specific or explicit the donor's expectation must be for such funds to be considered other support, not a gift. OYG's evaluation will identify how recipient institutions determine whether monetary donations that support investigators' research are gifts or should be reported to the NIH as other support. The OIG will also determine the value of monetary donations that supported investigators' research in fiscal year 2022. Now, this final report is expected in fiscal year 2023. 
24. All right. So, well, in my opinion, right, there's a lot, there's going to be so much more interest in that telehealth service and or opioid use disorder bundled payment work plan item that I mentioned, right? As well as that NIH work plan item on monetary donations. Both of these are going to affect providers, practices, hospitals, and health systems alike in 2024. So I think these reports with findings are always most interesting and informative, and I always look forward to analyzing them in the years ahead. It's also important for my listeners to pay attention to these monthly OIG work plan updates to see how they may impact you, your provider, or your health system. And now it's time for my best practice tips in trusty tip. So in today's compliance tip, I wanted to dive into a timely update on corrections that have already been made for our fresh ENM revisions for 2023. Fresh, right? Definitely fresh, because these corrections are for our little CPT ENM companion booklet that came with each and every new CPT coding manual this year for the new code set that just took effect on January 1st, 2023. So I hope you have a pen handy to take notes in that little companion booklet, right? So you can definitely make those changes in your new code book as well as that little CPT ENM companion booklet. So let's start on page seven of our new CPT ENM companion booklet. Now on, on page seven, that's specifically for our chapter one, hospital inpatient and observation care services. Remember, right? The inpatient setting is what has taken revision on January 1st. Those are the new, new codes, new descriptions, new revisions, new deletions and combinations of things that just took effect a few days ago, right? So again, that's page seven of the companion booklet and it is specifically for chapter one, hospital inpatient and observation care services. And it's specifically for table one dash four in the booklet that's titled hospital inpatient or observation care services, including admission and discharge services. Now in that table, there are two CPT codes that are affected with revisions for time. Those two CPT codes are CPT code 99235 and 99236. Now, let's talk about the first one. CPT code 99235 involves moderate medical decision making or MDM, right? And the time has been revised from 55 minutes to 70 minutes starting January 1st, 2023. Now, Further, what that code means in general, as it's defined in CPT, is that the provider sees a patient for hospital inpatient or observation care involving evaluation and management, that's the NM, with an admission encounter and discharge encounter on the same date. The ENM involves a moderate level of medical decision making, the MDM, or the provider spends at least 70 minutes of total time on the service on a single date. So that's the change specific to if our providers are going to be choosing the level of code 99235 for time, not for the MDM. There was no change on the moderate medical decision making, but the correction was for the time from 55 minutes to in fact, 70 minutes. And that change has been made and updated starting January 1, 2023. All right, then let's move on to that second CPT code that they're addressing in the companion booklet on page seven. So that second CPT code is 99236 that involves high medical decision-making or MDM. And the time has been revised from 70 minutes to 85 minutes starting on January 1st, 2023, again, so a few days ago. Now, what that code also means in general, as it's defined in CPT, is that 
your provider sees a patient for hospital inpatient or observation care involving evaluation and management, the ENM, with an admission encounter and discharge encounter on the same date. And the ENM involves a high level of medical decision making, MDM, or the provider spends at least 85 minutes of total time on the service on a single date. So again, be mindful on page seven of that booklet that the time element is what's changed from 70 minutes to 85 minutes. And they're making that retroactive on January 1, 2023. And then of course, if you're wondering about that low or straightforward medical decision-making code in this particular group of codes for the inpatient or observation setting, right? That's our CPT code 99234 with its time threshold of 45 minutes. There's absolutely no revision in time or in the MDM portion that's been made. That time is accurate at 45 minutes. And further, in general, that definition for RCPT code 99234, remember, means that that provider sees a patient for hospital inpatient or observation care involving evaluation and management, the ENM, with an admission encounter and discharge encounter on the same date. And the ENM involves a straightforward or low level of medical decision making, MDM, or the provider chooses and spends at least 45 minutes of total time on the service on a single date. So be mindful there have been no changes, no corrections to that CPT code 99234 on page seven. All right, then let's move on. Let's move on to the next corrections in our CPT companion booklet. Now, those changes are made on page 39 of the booklet specifically in table 6-4, which is titled Summary and Comparison of Prolonged Service Codes and Other ENM Codes Continued. That's the title of the table, but specifically we are addressing the changes and corrections that they made on prolonged services. And of course, in my opinion, what's new here, right? Because we certainly expected this for the inpatient setting since the new overhaul in this space literally just happened a few days ago on January 1st, 2023. We saw very similar things for the prolonged service codes in 2021 overhaul, right? For the office and outpatient setting for prolonged services. So this is the same. Now, specifically, let's go over CPT code 99418. And that's for our prolonged service in the inpatient setting. Or in general, this is where the provider spends an additional time that's been spent on an inpatient or observation evaluation and management service. And we should be using this code for each additional 15 minutes beyond the minimum required time of those CPT codes for inpatient or observation, evaluation, and management. Now, those corrections that have been made in our CPT companion booklet include the elimination of its use with the emergency department code that they mistakenly typed into that table. And that CPT code is CPT code 99283. That's written in that companion booklet. It's right there in the table. And instead, they did a line strike through and tell us that the corrected code to use is in fact CPT code 99306, which is for the nursing facility setting. Or that means in general, when the provider sees a patient for an initial nursing facility care visit involving evaluation and management, ENM. Now, the visit involves high medical decision-making, or the provider spends at least 45 minutes of total time on the encounter on a single date. So what that means is that the minimal amount of time that's including the prolonged service time for CPT code 99306 with CPT code 99418 is 60 minutes, right? There's been no change or correction to the time. So that means we're adding those 45 minutes that 
the physician, the provider is seeing for the initial nursing facility care visit for the CPT code 99306. And they're spending an additional 15 minutes of time with the patient. So 45 plus 15 is 60 minutes. So again, that's the minimal amount of time that's including the prolonged service with that CPT code for the initial nursing facility care visit. Then the correction also goes on to state that the prolonged service code 99418 can also be reported with CPT code 99310 for a subsequent nursing facility care service. Or in general, that's when the provider sees a patient for a subsequent nursing facility care visit involving ENM, right? Evaluation and management. The visit involves a high level of medical decision making again, or the provider spends at least 45 minutes of total time on the encounter on a single date. So again, the provider is choosing that time threshold of 45 minutes. And if they go above and beyond that for 15 extra minutes, they're going to be appending that CPT code 99418, right? So that makes sense then that the total time is also for 60 minutes for the appendage of both 99310 and the prolonged service code of 99418, right? But again, be mindful that that companion booklet definitely made a typo or whatever because it reads 50 minutes or more. So make sure that you um, strike that through with your pen and make that correction to 60 minutes for that CPT code 99310. Because for whatever reason, there was a little typo and they put 50 minutes instead of 60. So make sure you're very mindful and make that change in your companion booklet. So it's important to remember that at least for this latest round of corrections that they made to this little CPT coding booklet for the ENM changes that just took effect in 2023, January 1, that this prolonged service, CPT code 99418, is beyond the assigned time of code, right? For those two CPT codes that they're talking about, 99306 or 99310 right? And they have to be reported in multiple units of at least 15 minutes each. So be mindful when you're documenting time to go ahead and capture that prolonged service time, but make sure that it's medically necessary and make sure that it's documented for the medical necessity compliantly in the documentation. And then of course, just remember to strike through completely that 99283, that emergency department code. I don't know what happened there, but it's definitely incorrect, right? Because we don't use any time to choose our codes in the emergency department setting. All right. Now, so far, these are the corrections that came out for the CPT ENM companion booklet only. The CPT coding manual itself is accurate with those details I outlined above. There may yet be a technical corrections published around March or so, just like the AMA CPT did for the first huge overhaul of ENM guidelines for the office and outpatient settings in 2021. So I'm going to keep my eyes peeled. But regardless, regardless, right, read those updates and those changes and those consolidations and those deletions in the larger CPT coding manual itself and make sure that you carry around that little CPT ENM companion booklet of 40 total pages, because it really is very useful to have handy for your everyday work. And finally, I focus season eight spark on creativity. I want this eighth season spark to be filled with our world's thought leaders, writers, artists, philosophers, everyone who inspires the need for creativity in all we strive to do. So in this week's inspiring quote in Spark is from author Elizabeth Gilbert. A creative life is an amplified life. It's a bigger life, a happier life, an expanded life, and a hell of a lot more interesting life. Absolutely true, right? I think this is an amazing quote that reminds us to use that creativity we all have to celebrate all that we bring to the table. I think this quote reminds us of the importance, the value of the creative mind. 
I think this quote reminds us to keep creating, keep innovation alive, to see what you can create, what you can discover and uncover about yourselves. I think this quote inspires us to be bold, to be brave, to be creative. It is with our creativity that we can inspire all of those around us, especially the generations to come. I am happy Elizabeth Gilbert's spark still shines on in all of us today. So that wraps up today's episode. And as always, I appreciate you all diving into today with me. If you want more information from me, please go ahead and follow me on LinkedIn. I'll leave links to everything in the show notes below. All right, guys. So my final note today, keep those positive vibes going all month long, right? Still January. We're still fresh in the new year. So keep that positivity going. Keep your eye on the prize. 2023 is your year. And remember in 2023, every day has ample time to carve out a little piece just for you to stay grounded and decrease stress levels from building up. I wish you all an amazing week ahead. Thank you so much for listening in on today's episode. And I hope every week with me brings you closer to helping your providers paint a masterpiece. See you next Wednesday.